Hello, and welcome to Art with Mrs. Torres. This is April, my favorite time of year. At this time of year, all of our flowers are blooming in our yard, and it's just so colorful. At this time of year in April, my Armenian friends are celebrating their culture, and there is an Armenian artist named Martyros Sarian that I want to teach you about today. Now, Martyros Sarian was an impressionistic painter, and he painted many different paintings of flowers, plants, vegetables, fruit, hillsides, landscapes, mountain ranges, anything that had to do with nature. And I thought it would be fun for us to recreate one of his famous paintings today. We're going to be doing something called an oil pastel resist. Now, don't worry. If you don't have oil pastels, you can use crayons to do a resist as well. We're also going to need some watercolors. So any brand will work, whatever you've got laying around the house. Let's get ready to create a beautiful, colorful painting inspired by Martyros Sarian. Well, let's get ready to paint our beautiful, inspired painting by our Armenian artist, Martyros Sarian. This painting here is called Flowers of Armenia. Now, a few things I want to point out before we begin is I want you to notice how small the vase is at the bottom and how large the flowers are at the top. This is called forced perspective. So if you look at this painting, the vase seems very small and the flowers look like they're coming out at you. We're going to be recreating this project today using watercolor paper. So you're going to need a piece of watercolor paper. You're also going to need a paintbrush and some watercolors, a little bowl of water or a cup of water, a napkin for cleaning your brush, and oil pastels. Now, if you don't have oil pastels, you can also use crayons. So I would like you to gather up these items and then meet me back here and we'll get ready to do our project. I have my items gathered up. I do not need my paintbrush, my napkin, or my paints or water right now. So I'm gonna move those off to the side. And all we're going to be using right now is our watercolor paper. We're going to be putting our paper at a vertical direction like this. And then I'm also going to be using my oil pastels. So let's look at the picture that our artist has painted. And it is called Flowers of Armenia. So the first thing I notice is I've got a very small vase at the bottom. And that vase is about three of my fingers wide. Now, if you look at the arrangement of the flowers, they form a large, kind of like an upside down triangle like this. Do you see that? So this is called forced perspective because these flowers, it almost looks like you're up above them looking down and the vase is a little farther from you. So we're going to be creating the same illusion using our oil pastels. We don't even need a pencil today. We're just going to go straight in with our oil pastels. I want your paper to be vertical and we're going to start toward the very bottom and about three fingers wide is how big we're going to make our little vase. So I'm going to be using a light green oil pastel. And remember, if you don't have oil pastels, Pastels, just grab crayons. They work just as good. And we're going to be making uh, a mark in the center of our paper down at the bottom. So I'm going to find the center at the bottom and make a little dot with my oil pastel. That's where I'm going to find the center of my vase. So I'm going to put my center finger there and two fingers next to it. So this finger is right on top of that dot. And I'm going to put two fingers, one on each side, and then I'm going to make a little mark on this side and a little mark on that side. So that is how big I want my face to be. Now what I'm going to do is just draw a smile that connects those dots. And this is going to be the base of my face. Now it looks as if it just kind of curves around a little bit. So I'm going to kind of loop it around here and here. I'm not going to make it very big. And then it loops up again for the lip. So I'm going to make a little lip here and a little lip on the face here. And then I'm going to swoop it around just like the top of the vase here. And I'm going to make the second part of the lip of the vase. So I'm just going to curve it around here. And then you can see that there's a darker green stripe inside. So what we're going to be doing today is a resist. So we don't want to use too much oil pastel. We're just going to use a little bit for outlining and a couple scribbles 
for shading, but we're going to be doing all of the color with our painting actually. So over here, I'm just going to put a little scribble, just a couple lines for the shading on the side of my base. And I'm going to do a little bit on this side. Now you can see I'm leaving most of it with the paper. Then I'm going to put this color away. I'm going to move in with a darker green. And now I'm going to take my darker green. And by the way, if you don't have any of the colors that I am pulling out, then just go ahead and experiment with something different. So I'm going to make a little stripe through the middle and I'm going to redraw the bottom of the lip of the vase here, but I'm not going to color it in. I'm going to wait and do that later with my paint. I'm just going to color a little scribble on this side and a little scribble on that side. Now I'm going to come up and I'm seeing right here that these are going to be the stems. And then once again, I'm going to point out how big the flowers are. So I'm going to take my green and I'm going to make a little mark here and a little mark here. So that is where all of my stems are going to be coming out of my base. And then what I'm going to be hoping to do is fill up the top of this in kind of a funnel shape like this. So I'm going to have my flowers all creating a big funnel. So I'm going to switch over now and start working with some light colors. So the first color I'm going to look for in my pastel box is yellow. Now I've got two different kinds of yellow on my box. You can grab whatever yellow works for you. So as I'm looking at his arrangement, I see some clusters of flowers toward the bottom here. So I'm just going to scribble a little cloud shape like this. Do a second one and a third one. I'm just kind of repeating what I see here. I also see a couple little yellow puffs up here. So thinking about making it larger at the top and toward the sides, I'm going to make a little fluff of yellow here. I see another one up above here. So I'm going to come up here toward the corner, toward the edge of the paper and make one. And then there's one up a little higher. Now if I look at the top of the painting, he's got a whole bunch of yellow up there. So I'm just going to make a little scribble of yellow. And then he has another large section of yellow over here. So I'm just going to make another scribble out there. As, as you can see, I'm just kind of playing. I'm not really worrying about the shapes being perfect. And I'm not worrying about my placement being perfect either. You know, I've got some yellow over here. So I'm going to make another little cloud shape. And then do you see the centers of the flowers here? They're yellow, so that's three circles up here and one below. So I'm just going to go one, two, three. There's a little space of yellow in the center of that pretty pink flower. So that kind of looks like a star shape. There you go, something like that. Now, as you can see, my proportions are going to look different than yours and different than his, and that is absolutely okay. So I'm going to move off with my yellow. I'm going to move over to an orange color now. So the orange is going to help our yellow to pop a little bit more later and not get washed out. So I'm going to take my orange and I'm going to kind of scribble some outlines around my orange. Now, I have a couple different shades of orange in my pastel box. You can pick which orange you want to work with. I'm going to be working with the brighter one, I think. And all I'm going to do is first kind of retrace my yellow here. I'm going to add a little center on my flowers just by kind of scribbling. I'm going to scribble a little shadow in some of these. So now I'm going to go in and where I see pink in my picture, I'm going to start adding some pink. So I see some pink right here, like a little puff ball. So I'm going to make a little puff ball there. There's another one that surrounds this yellow. So I'm going to retrace my center here by making these petals. And you can see that there's a, it's dark pink in the middle and light pink on the outside. So I'm going to retrace it again. And then below that, over here, there's a pretty little puff ball of pink. So I'm just going to come over here and make a little circle. 
and it has a little darker center in the center. So I'm gonna go like that. I see some pink over here. I also see some light shades of pink in here. So I am gonna start to scribble some little stalks of pink every so often. I'm gonna be blending some purple and blue over these later. And you see, I am not copying his work exactly. I'm just kind of playing around. So have some fun with it. As you can see, each time I do it, it's a little bit different. You can see where my pink was scribbled in. I like this little flower up here. It's got lavender and some pink in it. So I'm gonna add that one to my picture. Make a little center in there. And then up here, I also see some pink in a little cluster of flowers up where that yellow flower is. So I'm just gonna actually fill it in and put a couple pink little circles in there. Now that oil pastel is gonna resist the watercolor later. So anywhere where you want it to stay light pink, you can actually color it in. So I can color in this little section right here on the flower. That will stay light pink and then I can paint over it. And wherever the paper is, the paper is going to absorb the watercolor. So there will be some resist from the oil pastel. And then wherever there's paper, it's gonna be a darker color. I'm gonna scribble a little pink in there. And I also see a flower down here that I'm gonna add in my picture. It's a wibbly wobbly flower. And then I'll add some purple to it later. All right, I'm gonna put my pink away and I'm gonna move on now to purple. So in my box, I've got a couple different shades of purple. You can go ahead and grab whatever sh shade that you would like to work with. And this is where I'm gonna really start adding a lot more scribbles. So if you notice, there's a bunch of stalks of lavender right here in his flower arrangement. So I am gonna start scribbling in some purple. And since I have more than one shade of purple in my box, I will trade over and use a different shade later. So I'm gonna also make kind of these little loop shapes. So I'm gonna make, you can do this by starting with a line if it's easier. And then I'm just gonna make loops left, right, left, right. Kind of like you're making bunny ears all the way down. And you can make it get a little smaller as it gets to the top. You can see those right here. It's got another one here and here and here. So these are really easy to draw. You just have to start with a straight line. And then you can start from the bottom if that's easier. I find it easier to go from the top down, but maybe you find it easier to go this direction. And what you want to do is have them get a little smaller as they go up to the top. You can see also this is kind of an interesting plant here and here. I'm kind of like looped over like that. So I'll draw a few of these. Kind of look like puppy dog ears. I'm gonna add other colors to this later. So I'm gonna do another little scribble right here. And you want to make sure that those colors come all the way down into the base too. We'll add some stalks there of green as well. All right, I'm going to put my purple away. I'm going to switch over to a different shade of purple and I'm just going to repeat what I've done before, adding another color in. I'm not coloring anything in. I'm just kind of adding a little extra. When you are all finished with your purple, and move over into blue. So I have a couple different shades of blue. So I'm gonna experiment with a bunch of them. I'm gonna scribble my blue over my purple. That's gonna make a really pretty color. Kind of a periwinkle. And then I'm gonna add some flowers that are blue by themselves too. Now you don't have to color anything in. Remember, we're gonna go back over this with our watercolors. And then whenever you're finished with one shade of blue, if you've got a different shade, you're gonna do the same thing. Whenever you're finished with your blue, go ahead and put that color back. Our final color before we start painting is green. So I'm gonna be taking a lime green, a light green. I think this is a great color 
to kind of add some foliage with. So I made these little pink puff balls up here. So I'm gonna add some stems with that. I'm gonna put some stems down into my vase. Now remember, we don't really want to color things in, but we do want to definitely add some greenery. You can see a lot of green in this painting. So I'm just going to add some strands like this. And I'm going to also add some scribbles. So my scribbles will look kind of lost, like ferns. If you have a darker shade of green, you can I'm going to pop in some dark green just to kind of break it up. And then I'm going to add a little bit of leaves around the base. Do you see how there's some leaves around the base of the base? I'm just going to put a couple teardrop shaped leaves in there and I'm going to scribble a little bit of green just on the side. Now you don't want to put too much because remember we want this to be able to absorb our paint. Now our final part is to create the table. This is the table you can see it in the background here. And then we will uh, draw the line for the table. We'll scribble a little bit over it. And then we will go ahead and paint our background and everything inside. So let's draw our table. What color do you want to make your table? So it looks like his table is kind of a blue color. Um, I'm going to do all this really dark blue that I've got in my box, and I'm just going to kind of create a rounded shape for the table. I'm going to outline around my base with my same color I used for my table. I'm also going to use it to kind of outline the edge of my leaf and any flower or arrangement that's kind of outlining the table. So right here. And then while I have this dark color in my hand, you can always use it to go in and just pop this color in somewhere, just so that you have something else in your picture that has the color that you used for your table. Once you're done with that, I'm going to have you just take your color and don't color the entire table. You want to leave a lot of paper showing. We're just lightly scribbling it. You see how I see, still have a lot of paper showing? You can make it a little darker around the bottom of the vase just to cast a shadow. Now we're ready to paint. So I'm going to go ahead and put my pastels away. I'm going to move in with my water. I am a lefty, so my water cup is going on my left hand side. My paints are going to go on my left hand side. My paintbrush and my napkin. So let's clean our brush. Make sure we start with the lightest color first. That way our water doesn't get too dirty. And the first thing we're going to start with is yellow. Now, remember, our oil pastel is going to be resisting our paint. So the first thing I'm going to do is drop some water into my yellow paint. And while you're at it, just go ahead and put a couple drops in each one of the colors. We will not be using any brown and we will not be using any black today. So my first color I'm going to be working with is yellow. It's my lightest color. I'm definitely not going to be sticking my brush into the yellow paint. I just want to kind of tickle the water that's floating on top. And everywhere I see yellow in this painting, that's where I'm going to add my yellow water. So I'm just going to paint very quickly with a little bit of water and that paint water right over the flowers. Now you can see as I do this, that it resists against the oil pastel and that oil pastel pops right through the paint. So a little bit of water, making sure you're working with a nice watery paint. Everywhere you see yellow, you're just going to tickle your paintbrush into it and put that into your painting. Now you might notice a little bit of that oil pastel or your crayon will start floating in your paint water and that is okay. So I finished my yellow already. It's looking beautiful. And now I'm going to go in and I'm going to do my next color. So I'm going to move in now to some orange. So I'm going to get a little bit of orange on my brush. And in some of my yellow, I'm just going to put a little bit of orange. As you can see, I am not worrying about things being perfect. I'm just literally tapping my brush in there. Now, if your color is too dark, let's say you don't like it, you can just pick it up and carry it in somewhere else. So 
my next color I'm going to go into my painting is pink. Now, I don't have pink in my Crayola set. I don't have pink, but I have red. So I'm going to tap my brush into that red paint water. And as long as I dilute it with a lot of water, I will get something that looks close to a pink. So I'm going to take that red paint water. If you have pink, go ahead and paint with it. And I'm going to paint that into all of my sections that I put pink oil pastel in. Out my brush. And now we're going to move on to purple. Does your color set have purple? Mine does have purple. It just doesn't have pink. So now with my purple, I'm going to go in. My purple is really dark. So I'm going to scoop it up and add a little bit more water to it to carry that color over into some other spots. Whenever you're finished with your purple, then we're going to move on to blue. Now, this paint set I'm working with only has one shade of blue. Some paint sets have more than one shade of blue, but as long as you have laid a purple or a pink down, when you lay your blue over it, you're going to make it a completely different shade of blue. So you can paint blue onto your paper and then lay it over something that has purple or pink and you're going to get a completely different shade. So you can do blue side by side with another section and part of it will look like a periwinkle and part of it will look like a lavender and part of it will look like a deep, deep blue and some will look like a deep purple. We are almost done with our painting. When we're finished with our blue. Our next color we're going to be working with is the green. And now I'm going to paint over my base. I'm going to paint over my leaves. I'm going to grab that paint water and go in and paint over anything that I painted or drew green earlier. Also, if you have any spaces in between the flowers, this is a good time to take that green paint water and fill that in as well. Oh, this is turning out so pretty. How is yours turning out? I hope you're enjoying the project. Now, we are almost done. Our final part, oops, I got some green in my yellow flower. So if you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to take my paintbrush and I'm going to scoop it up by wiping my brush off on my napkin. And I use my brush kind of like a Q-tip. So you can see I pulled all that color out. I'm going to pull this purple out too. So now I'm going to dry that area with my brush as best I can. Now I can go back in with a clean brush. And I can reload my yellow back into my flower. So our final part will be painting our table and also the background. So I copied what the artist did in this painting. He looked like his table was kind of a blue color and he did some warm colors up in the top. So I mixed in some yellows and oranges and reds, but you can create your table and your background with any color scheme you'd like. So for instance, this time, maybe I don't want to do a blue table. Maybe I want to do a purple table. So instead of using blue, I think I will do some shades of purple. So I'm going to grab some purple on my brush, add a little bit of water to it, and spread that out. When you're painting with your paintbrush, make sure that you are not scratching the metal ferrule of the brush onto the paper. Sometimes when we are painting, we get excited and we start scratching our paint and that's just telling us that we need to add a little bit more water. That's gonna help you spread your paint better than pushing hard with the paintbrush. I'm gonna add a little bit more paint water. If your color is too dark, let's say you put your color on and it's super dark like that, then all you need to do is grab a little bit of water and carry it around your paint. You can also scoop up whatever color you made your table, blue, purple, green, whatever color you chose, 
And you can use this color back in your painting as well. So I could scoop up this leftover color and go in and tap it into my flowers. So our final part will be to be painting our background, the sky around here. So we looked at his painting, he did some warm colors, yellows, oranges. Now, because this area is wet down here, sometimes your paper can resist that color with the oil pastel, but sometimes the colors might mix together. So when I'm painting this oil pastel line right here, it might block the colors from running together, but it possibly won't, and that's okay. So I'm gonna start by working at the top of my paint. I'm gonna turn my painting so you can see the top. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of water up here. Now, right there, you see how wet that section is with the green. My green is gonna leak into my background. I'm not worried about it. I think it's gonna be absolutely beautiful. I'm not concerned. Just adding a little water up at the top. And I'm gonna start with yellow. Oops, there goes my green. Did you see? It's exploding. So I really liked the colors that he used in his. So I'm gonna go in now and pop in a little orange. And a wet surface like this is just going to run off the edge of my paper. That's why I've got my background paper behind me. And I like that warm contrast to all the cool colors in the painting. And then I'm going to carry my water now, just a little water. I don't need to paint yet, down to the bottom. It may connect with that table, it might, might not. We'll have to wait and see. To my other side of my painting, so I'm gonna turn it carefully around this direction. First, if the paper starts to curl, you can always just kind of hold it down with your finger. Yellow water first, and then orange. So I hope you had fun today making our Martyrosaurian inspired painting. This painting in his original was called Flowers of Armenia. I think ours turned out just as beautiful. What do you think? I had fun teaching you about our artist today and I hope you had fun and I look forward to seeing your painting. Why don't you send me a picture of your work to rtorres at lcusd.net and I'll see you for our next lesson. Thank you. Have a great day.